and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name for here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six <clears throat> now that section there I will be teaching about more on next week the image of the beast uh, uh, the mark of the beast and so forth but what we've got here is if you'll notice that I don't care who you are if you're not a born again believer if you're not a born again believer I don't care if you're small and great if you're rich or poor if you're free and bond you're going to have to receive that mark or you've had it you're going to chop your head off it's that simple start out in the word of God <clears throat> now in 57 B.C., the first three nations in the old Roman Empire were Belgium, Holland, which at that, 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 at that time was the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. And then 2,000 years later, history has repeated itself. In 1948, we had Belgium, Holland and Luxembourg starting in the, the common market. So now we've got three. In 1957, we had Italy, France, and West Germany. So now we've got six. In 1973, we had Great Britain, Ireland, and Denmark. So now we've got nine. 1981, Greece joined the common market. So now we've got 10. You say, whoa, 1981, we are... What happened? We were all ready to... What happened? Very simple. Read the Word of God. <laughs> Some people will say, this is it, this is it. That was 1981. Not yet. Look at Daniel chapter 7, verse 24. Daniel chapter 7. Verse 24. And the, ten, and the ten horns out of the kingdom are ten kings. In other words, we get ten nations with ten leaders. That shall arise, and another... Now we've got eleven. And another. We've got eleven. That's the little horn, isn't it? Okay shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three. He shall subdue three kings, or he shall subdue three. So actually, what we've got here is we've got ten that shall arise. We've got eleven, which is a little horn, and he's going to subdue the three. So we're going to have to have thirteen to end up with ten. You still with me? Let's look at Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. That's the little horn. That's the Antichrist. Before whom there were picked, there, there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. So as you can see, you're going to have three that's going to be plucked up by the roots. So we've got to have 13 to end up with 10 plus the, the, the 1, which is the, the Antichrist or Daniel's little horn. Y'all holding on to your seats there? In 1986, Spain and Portugal joined the common market. So now we've got 11 and 12. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 33, it is near even at the very door. My dear people, you might as well just start packing your bags. Because that rapture is about here, I'm telling you. Why do I say that? <laughs> just look around us. <clears throat> Austria has applied to the common market. Number 13. I don't believe they've been approved yet, but they have, <laughs> they have applied to the common market. So you see, you have to have 13 to end up with 10. Why? Because in Daniel 7, 24, it says, He shall subdue three kings. 
So we've got to have 13 to end up with 10. Because we see in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44... And in these, uh, in the days of these kings, and in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. In the day of these kings, what kings? These ten kings. These ten nations. You see, the common market or the ten is the, the, the launching pad for the Antichrist, and it's about ready. As you can see, as you can see, everything that we've gone through these past three weeks, we are in the last of the last days. We are the rapture generation concerning Israel. Ezekiel 38 and 39 are being fulfilled right in front of our eyes on a daily basis. You turn on, and isn't it, I ask you this, turn on TV, isn't Russia getting worse? More dictatorship, more authoritarianism? Getting worse, getting worse. You watch. The European common market, in other words, the geographical area, which is which is the forerunner of the, the Antichrist kingdom, is within the boundaries of the revised Roman Empire, if you were to look at it. That lines up totally with the Word of God in the book of Daniel. If you start looking at all these kingdoms... It's right there. Been there for 2,600 years. 2,600 years it's been there. In Daniel 7, 24, since we're right here, the Word of God says, And the ten horns out of the kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he, meaning the Antichrist, shall subdue three kings. He, meaning the Antichrist, which is Daniel's little horn. I will be teaching on that a little bit more. Now, <clears throat> as a born-again believer, first of all, turn with me to Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, chapter two. Whew. Hallelujah! Y'all with me? Beginning in verse one. Now we beseech you, brethren. Now the Lord is talking to us. He's talking to the brothers in Christ. He's talking to the body of Christ. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he's talking about the second coming here, and by our gathering together unto him, verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. In other words, he's saying, my dear, my dear people, my brothers, my sisters, my, the born-again believers, don't, be sh don't worry about this. Don't be shaken in mind. Don't be troubled, neither in your spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as that the day of the Christ, the Christ is at hand. In other words, because the day of the Lord is at hand. Why? You're already born again. You will not taste the second death. It's the people that are not born again that's got the problem. Now, that's who we've got to pray for. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. You know, I've read this for years. Except there come a falling away first. And I thought, you mean to tell me everybody's just going to leave church and fall out and... <coughs> a voice, you know, read that that way. And that then, in other words, the son of the man of sin or the Antichrist will be revealed, the son of perdition. So I was sitting there meditating on the Word of God and I'm meditating and I've been praying and praying and I've been meditating and the Lord says, look that up in the Greek. Now, what, what the Greek text... Because when we went to school, I don't know how, how many of you. How many, of course, we study a lot of Greek and so forth. But how many of you know that when the, the 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 Old Testament was written in Hebrew, the New Testament was written in Greek? Okay, and of course, your translation you have here in the King James is out of the Greek text. So the Greek language itself has a problem sometimes when it comes to the English language, as because it wants to say more than what the English language actually does want to say. 
So I said, okay, Lord. So I looked that up. Verse 3, let me go back over this again. It says, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. So I looked up the phrase, falling away. The Greek word is, I can't pronounce it, apasitai. It's A-P-H-I-S-T-M-I. You know what it means? Hold on to your chairs. <laughs> it's to depart. To depart. He's talking about the rapture. Woo! Huh? He's talking about the rapture. To depart. So don't be bothered. Don't be worried. Man, we're going to get out of here. We're going to depart. I'm telling you, I couldn't hardly sit down after that one. <laughs> now, for the new people, maybe don't aren't familiar with the Word of God when they're talking about the rapture uh, that, that we're talking about here in Second Thessalonians, uh, verse four, uh, chapters, uh, chapter four, verses sixteen and seven. It says, "For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive, that's us, and remain shall be caught up. We're going to depart." together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So my dear people, we're going to depart. We're going to depart. Uh, so, in other words, no one will know, uh, although I'm teaching about the, like, the Antichrist and all that, you're not, we're not going to know who he is or anything else, really. It's not going to happen. We're not going to be here. So don't worry about it. Don't fret about it. Don't do any of these things, you know. But you do need to know that you can tell others. Yes. See. So, the, the uh, identity of the Antichrist will, uh, will not really be known until the seven-year tribulation begins, which will begin when we depart. Yes. I can tell you right now that he is alive today and he is being, being, being prepared for his work. There's no doubt about it. The opening of the first seal in Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, marks the beginning of the seven-year the seven tribulation because what it boils down to is that's when the Antichrist is loosed and so on the first seal. It talks about a, a, a man on a white horse coming and so forth. A lot of people have always thought that was Jesus. Well, no, it's not Jesus because the Lamb is Jesus and he's, that's who's opening the seals. See? So it's this, it's this very successful... Um, person that will rise up and then he will be in essence he will be possessed by the, the spirit of uh, the devil you know the antichrist hallelujah I want to keep reading here to show you a few things here in <clears throat> Second Thessalonians again keep reading here verse 3 I'll start again let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come, except there shall come a falling away, or we're going to depart. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And here you have a picture of the Antichrist. Now, I wish I had some of this with me, but, but you know, it also talks about in, in the Word of God where the temple has got to be built. I remember, I don't have it with me. Uh, of the, like the linens and the, the utensils that they will be using in the temple. That's already began. That's another thing. I'll try, I'll try to br remember to bring that. Uh, so, <clears throat> we see here, verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. So Paul's saying, don't you remember I told you these things? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're not going to be here anyway. All right. <laughs> Verse 6, And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. So what, what, what is Paul talking about there? In other words, Paul is saying, well, in other words, the Antichrist is being withheld from the earth. Why? Well, because you see the body of Christ. We are the salt and the light. In other words, we are the preservative of the earth. We are the light that dispels the darkness uh, that holds in check the Antichrist from being loose at this time. Now, the minute we're gone, he's loosed. You see? Now, to, to, to stress that a little bit more, let's go back. If we look at Sodom and Gomorrah, 
Lot. Abraham and Lot went to Sodom and Gomorrah, and Lot went in to try to, to, to help people. Okay. And, of course, it didn't work. Now, if you'll notice in that, in that scripture, I won't turn to it, but <clears throat> God did not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah until he removed Lot. So what did Lot represent? He represented the righteousness. You see? Because not one living soul that's righteous. And my dear people, we're not righteous because of anything we've ever done. It's because of the blood of Jesus Christ. But because of that, not one living soul of righteousness will that Antichrist ever put his foot on his earth. But the moment that's removed, look out. And that's the stage we're at right now. We're that, that close. People will be marrying. They'll be giving in marriage. Just like in the days of Noah. Just like in the days of Noah. They, uh, uh, Noah, God told Noah to build this ark. And here's Noah out in the middle of, of a desert. There wasn't any water for hundreds of miles. No water. And here's Noah out there just beating and building this ark. And, and, and it was a humongous thing. It took him 120 years to build it. It was bigger than, a, than, than the, the, uh, the uh, QE2. Put all these animals in it. Can you imagine the mockers and the scoffers? He says, man, I'm telling you, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's just like right now. I'm t you know, it's like you know, God sends out his servants. It's coming. You know, we came all the way from over there. It's coming, it's coming. People out here marrying, getting married. I'll tell you what, when that door shuts, it's shut. Those people are banging on that door wanting in. You know what? It did not open. The only one to believe Noah was his own family. I want to give you just a little bit of the script, script, uh, scriptural truths about the, the, uh, the coming Antichrist. Just give you some scriptures here. In Daniel 8, 23, we see that, first of all, he will appear on the scene in the latter times or in the last days. In 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, 2 verses 6 and 7, his manifest, talks about his manifestation is being hindered by the true church, which I just explained to you. In Daniel 8, 23 and 25, he will be demon-possessed, controlled by Satan with the ability to lie and deceive. Because Satan is a liar and he is a deceiver. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, the Word of God says he will perform lying signs and wonders. In Daniel eleven thirty seven, he will be a homosexual, not prone to women. In Daniel eleven twenty one, 21, talks about him, he will come as a man of peace. He will come as a man of peace. He will come as that man on the white horse to solve all these problems that we're out here looking at. But see, the world does not have an answer. The answer is Jesus Christ. The world does not have an answer. It will never have an answer. See? In Daniel 9.27, we see that as head of the ten-nation empire, he makes a seven-year covenant with Israel. In Daniel 11.36, he will exalt himself above God. And in, and, and in, but in, in, in Revelations 19.20, he will be terminated Amen. by God Almighty <laughs> and cast into the lake of fire at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We'll see here in Daniel 7. Daniel chapter 7. Verses 13 and 14. The Word of God says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given to him a dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall be not destroyed. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. In Daniel chapter 2, sign my right here. Verse 35, we see, and we're talking about our Lord Jesus Christ here, we see that He's called the stone that smote the image 
and became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. In Daniel 2, verse 44, we see, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. We see also in Daniel 2, 45, Hallelujah. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious stone, a sure stone, a sure foundation. Because the dream is certain and the interpretation is sure. The stone that struck the feet of iron and clay, the stone that smote the image become a great mountain and filled the whole earth. My dear people, Startling things are having, happening in our generation. Startling things. You've got to remember things are going to happen and they're going to happen fast. <sighs> to show you how fast, once we're removed from the earth, it's going to be completely gone in seven years. That's seven years. Bam. Seven year tribulation. Then there'll be a new kingdom. So the stage is being set for the end of the age. I don't think I have to tell you that you and I both know that there's a, a an expect, uh, excitement or expectation. Okay. You may, you know, and you may ask, well, how near is the end? How near is it? How near is it? The Lord Jesus said, now learn the parable of the fig tree. Remember that? When his branch is yet tender and putting forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Jesus was talking about the rest restoration of Israel and that happened in 1948. 1948. He said in his word, Jesus said that this, this generation will not pass away till these things come to pass. And he, and he says this generation, he's talking about this generation that witnesses the restoration of Israel. There was no Israel prior to 608 B.C. What none. Praise your Father. Yes, the dream is certain and the interpretation is sure. The dream is certain and the interpre interpretation is sure. Hallelujah. Would you all stand with me, please? Hallelujah. Man, we're going to...